give you praise. I give you praise. I'm for kind of vlogs, and today, um, well, this month rather is Black History Month, and they are honoring my dad today. Um, for Black History, I think it's uh, phenomenal that you can honor Black History while you're still here, um, instead of you know, when you're um, deceased, which is nothing wrong with that. It's just that there's nothing wrong with just honoring them while they're here. So later on, well, in a few minutes, they're going to um, come in and interview my dad, and um, I will be filming it. So y'all will get the raw and uncut. Y'all will get a lot of knowledge and, and pointers on how my dad came up um, until now. So until then... Y'all stay blessed. Yeah, you also was limited to what you could do. I can remember when they had the march and stuff like that throughout the city and stuff. And the white boys was hecking us black because, you know, they had advantage over us. You know, you wasn't able to sit down in front of the places and eat. And it, it, was, it was just rough, you know. Wow. And one thing I liked about it, God was right there with us all the time. So one thing he brought us through, went, just like Martin Luther King said, we'll overcome it, you know. Absolutely. So Absolutely. I, I remember when they burned crosses in the churchyard, people's yard, you know, just to see stuff like it there really was exciting to me. Mm -hmm. Because at that time I really, really didn't understand what was going on. Right. But I was old enough to know right from wrong. Okay, okay. So just going a little bit further, so you're you're just in your tween years going into the fifties, because you were born in thirty eight, so um high school. Let's take a little further. So high school, you went to Albert Harris High School. Right. But you didn't finish high school. Right. So what was the last grade you completed in high school? Eleventh grade. Eleventh grade, yeah. okay. So you're not going to school, so what are you doing then? Well, I worked under my grandfather as an electrician apprentice. Okay. So, you know, they go to show, you know, if you don't finish high school, still you had an opportunity chance to take up a trade or, you know, do something like that. And by him being the first black electrician in Martinville, he was the only black electrician in Martinville at that time when I was working under him. Okay. And, you know, we did different buildings, we did houses. You know, I learned a lot from it. I learned to read blueprints, you know, and things like that. How to put in switches, boxes, plugs, hang fans, lights. You know, I learned all that stuff. Good stuff. And that was good for me. Okay. So then after that, uh, you joined the military. You joined the army, correct? Well, they drafted me. They drafted me. <laughs> okay. They don't do that anymore. <laughs> yeah, that wow. Great. So, and drafted mean you ain't really have a choice. Oh, okay. sure. Okay, so you go into the army, and in the army, to, army, what position did you have in the army? Well, according to my MOS, they put me in as a classified as a generator specialist. I'm an electrician. Okay, so the electrical skills carried over into right. the military. Okay, right. And okay, good stuff, good stuff. So you leave the army, you're doing electrical work, you get out of the army, and what happened next? You you went to work for the Pentagon, right? Right. After I got out of the army. I went out to service two weeks before I went to work in the Pentagon for the Navy Department as a courier. So okay. you had to be classified, which I was classified under uh, security and all, because you had, at that time, you had to go either to the White House or to the Capitol. You might go out in Maryland and get on a ship right there. Mm -hmm. you, wherever they wanted to send you, that's where you went. Nice, nice. Work so I enjoyed that. Yeah. I really did. Good stuff, good stuff. So, um, you leave the Pentagon, you return back home, Marjorie, right? Right. Okay. And so, tell me a little bit about that. Once you got home, what was the transition like coming out of the military and coming back home? Well, <clears throat> when I came back home, my father and mother, they were running the store there. They had a store, okay. a grocery store. So, mm -hmm. they were running that. And then I said, well, hey, I just stay and help them for a while. 
you know, that wild ended up being 20 years. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. it's sometimes because I was only going to stay maybe two to three weeks anyway, so he used to help them because he had got sick, my father had. And like I said, it ended up being 20 years there. And that's where I met my wife, Love. Okay. Because I went out to her aunt's house and did the work out there for her. And little was peeping out the door, and I saw I said, wow, I'm going to have to get this woman, you know. <laughs> so, so that's what I did. And I ended up with her, you know, and then another took sick. And after she got sick, I noticed my son, Pastor Kevin, came and got her and brought her here to Charlotte. So meanwhile, when she came down, another came down in 99. Mm -hmm. And I came in 2000, because I told them I said, well, the job that I was working on in Martinville, after it, my parents at the store, I said, I want to stay here, get this money, you know, mm -hmm. and get my little bonus, and then I'll be on there. And that's when I came there in 2000, and I've been there ever since. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Um, so going back a little bit, though, there was something that was interesting that I, I remember learning as a little boy from you. Um, so you and your brother had a music group. Right. Right, and you guys actually recorded albums. Right. All right. But then one of the things that I remember as a child that you shared with me that you were so proud of was that you guys were like the first blacks in the town to have a limo. Right. Right. To see how many people? Well, it, it was a nine pattern limo. <laughs> there was 13 of us all together, including the band and the group. Okay. We had a group and a band. Okay. And it was 13 of us all together. So, and we moved out of Monville and went to went to, went to uh, West Virginia, okay. Brookfield, West Virginia. John Gibson had a brother there. He was the mayor at that time. Black guy was the mayor. He had his own club and hotel there. Okay. So he put us in there as long as we did band, did dance and things for okay. them at night. You know. Gotcha. So they gave us all free rooms and board and stuff like. We booked out. Out of that, to like Tennessee, Kentucky, West Virginia, mm -hmm. Virginia, Washington, Maryland. Okay. That's what we did. Okay. Good stuff. Okay, so growing up in the 50s, the 40s, the 50s, as a middle schooler, teenager, uh, working under, dropping out of high school, working under Grandpa J.D. as an electrician apprentice, um, joining the Army, working again in electrician, uh, getting out of the army, working for the Pentagon, uh, going home and managing and running the grocery, the family grocery store. Uh, you were busy. <laughs> oh yeah. All right. So yeah. then we speed it up a little bit to where uh, we was watching the transition. So there was a big transition in your life that I noticed as well, which was you got saved. Yeah. And because I didn't remember you going to church a lot when I was little. Uh, but we always had to go to church, oh, yeah. right? Because yeah. we lived yeah. like, yeah. there was a two-car driveway to separate our house from the church. And everybody thought that we was the pastor's house, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. But one day you decided to change your life and you gave your life to Christ. Oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. you became a deacon, yeah. you became a trustee. But so explain this real quick, if you don't mind. Why the transition? Why did you change? Because I remember you growing up. I remember you, we always had alcohol in the house. You smoked a lot. You know, you was yeah. a great guy, though. You know, you was an awesome dad. And I loved you for it because I never had any issues, but I noticed it because it was in the cabinet. The China cabinet, I always had the right. vodka bottles. And, right. You know, but I didn't, I remember going to church with mom. But you didn't always go to church. But now you're starting to go to church. What what happened? What changed that? Well, you know, I, I was drinking and. You know, smoking and doing stuff like that there. A little bit of everything, running and up and down the road, having crazy, and still, I had my family to look after. Mm -hmm. And I drove a truck. I didn't tell you, I drove a truck down here to Charlotte. Mm -hmm. Richmond, Charlotte, Maryland, and Charlotteville, Virginia. And I remember one Sunday, I left on a Sunday at 2 o'clock coming here so I could put my load off on that Monday morning at 7 o'clock. And after I Brought my load off there. I was on my way back home, and looked like something spoke to me and told me, "Sir, you need to get in the church." Mm. And I remember I come up the road grabbing that truck, crying. Mm. And when I got home, and after I cleared the truck over and parked it where I was working at, 
I came home, I sit out on the step, I told them, I said, I'm going to join the church. Mm. And I went out there and sat on, on the steps in front of my yard, and I remember this deacon come through there, Nathaniel Harrison. And I told Nathan, I said, Nathan, I said, when you go to church, I said, tell the pastor I want to speak to him. He said, well, what seems to be your problem? I told him, I said, I said right now, I want to join the church. He said, well, you ain't, you ain't that good to tell the pastor. He said, I tell the pastor myself when I go. He said, we'll come back and talk to you when, when we get through with our meeting. Mm. So they talked with me. And at that time, they had six more guys that was going to be baptized that father and son. Mm -hmm. So I told them I want to be baptized with them. Mm -hmm. We made the seven. I was the seven guy. Mm -hmm. And I remember my uncle Oscar told me, he said, say, bro, say who, who are those other boys going to join the church? I said, well, you didn't come on church Sunday. You can find out just like that. You know? right. So he came to church, and when I joined the church, and it was 12 of us went in as deacons. Mm -hmm. Out of all 12 of us, I'm the only one that stayed in there as a deacon, you know, under, learning under the deacon. Mm -hmm. And it was 13 months before I was ordained as a deacon. Because gotcha. I could have been ordained early, but at that time, we didn't have a pastor. Oh, okay. And I was determined that if I'm going to be ordained as a deacon, I want my pastor to ordain me, be there with me, you know? Nice. Yeah. So when we did get a pastor, Reverend Jesse Allred, he became my pastor. And about a month after that, they had ordinary service for me, you know? Mm -hmm. So then I was ordained as a deacon. And then not only that, I was the only one there that started that male course. That's why we got male course today. Mm -hmm. I thought that male course because all y'all were in it. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I, I really have, my life has changed a whole lot, and I really thank God for it, too, because, you know, I'm not the greatest, I'm not the worst. Absolutely. I just thank God because we all make mistakes and fall short. Gotcha. You know? So let me end on this. Um, I'll save the best for last. <laughs> um, great, great walk of story. Uh, but one of the things that made me really proud to have you as a father um, and celebrate Black History Month, um, I had to go back to, again, we, we live beside the church, so people thought the pastor lived here. Right. Um, but I remember cars breaking down. I remember people needing help. Just random people because they thought they were going to see the pastor, and when they knocked on the door, it was us. Right. And I remember having to give up my room to oh, strangers yeah. oh, that yeah. needed a place to stay the night. And I remember, I used to ask the question, I used to ask mama all the time, why do we always help people? We don't even know these people. But back in the day, this was the time when we would go to sleep at night and still leave the front door open oh, or yeah. leave it unlocked. And yeah. We never locked the door. I never had a house key until it was the back end of high school. We would just come and go as we pleased. But I remember you showing your heart by helping people that we didn't even know. I remember uh, one story in particular that really showed me a lot of your character when um, you let a guy that's car broke down, he stayed at the house for three days. Oh, yeah. He needed a place to stay. Mm -hmm. I gave my room up, he said, go stay with Brian's room. And okay. this guy stayed in the room. And I remember one day, the last day, we were he was leaving. And I kept hearing this commotion outside. And I looked out the window and this guy, he was making this guy take a box of my trophies and my medals right. out the trunk of his car. The guy was stealing my stuff. <laughs> and I was remember I remember looking out the window and saying, oh my dad gonna give it to him now. But you didn't. You just said, listen, give me the stuff and go on about your business. And part of me was disappointed because I was looking for you to fight the guy. But the other part that, that gave me the best part of your character was that's how you treat people sometimes, you know? Oh, yeah. um, you, yeah. you, you were the bigger man in the whole situation. And I remember that just as plain like it was yesterday. And that's one of the things I really appreciated about you was you showed me not only tough love growing up, but you right. also showed me how to be a Christian. Oh, yeah. Because that's a Christian move right there. Oh, yeah. So that right there uh, just puts you on a high pedestal school for me as a son. So that part, I appreciate you, you instilling that in me right. as well. And also, you know, you got to also remember, too, I own my own business a couple of times. You, know? you did. In the community, you had, uh, I don't detail. 
Right. Right? The right. LeBron and I worked there. Right. <laughs> For low pay, but we worked there. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> so I really appreciate that. You got that. all the pay you wanted, but I gave you, I gave you all the cars and everything. <laughs> That's true. That's a good trade off. It's a good trade off. But you did. You own that business. How many, how many years did you own that? Four years. Four years in the community. I remember that. A um, lot of nice little hangout spot. Um, so. You know, just being able to add that. And that's where I got my entrepreneurial spirit from as well, was watching you um, hold down. You and mom held down a, the nine to five. Mom worked at the bank. You worked at the newspaper, the bulletin. But you also had a side hustle, which was the car wash. Right. You know, and right. having an auto detail shop was just was great. And, and everything that you've done, bless, you know, myself, Brian, and, of course, my older sister, my older sister, Ophelia, as well. So, and I know mom's not here today. Uh, but I know she is, like you said, she's smiling on us, man, and just it's just great to have, uh, be able to share your story. I appreciate your time with that as well, too, and appreciate Life Turning Point Ministries as well oh, yeah. for allowing us to just honor you, and I honor you, Brian honors you, and Ophelia honors you, and I know Mom is smiling down as well, so she honors you, too, so I really appreciate that. Anything you want to say in closing? Yeah, one thing I would like to say, you know, is let you know that Ophelia was the first girl. So, you know, I want to make sure she get recognized off the Absolute call. Absolutely. Hey, I, I love that girl, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. And I thank God for you, Brian, Ophelia, as being my children, you know. Absolutely. And Absolutely. I know Luna appreciated y'all also because Luna would always tell me, now, don't be hard on them. Don't do this. <laughs> don't do this. And, you know, she was a good woman. Yes, so, she was. She was. I, I thank God for all of you and all my grandchildren. Hey, I really enjoyed it. And I thank God for Eric, Pastor Eric now, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and his congregation and his church. And all I wish him God speed and hope and pray that everything turns out well for him and that he continue to go on and be what the Lord wants him to be. And, Keep on running to the song that I'm not tired yet. <laughs> running for Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much, and that's a wrap. Thank you. Life Turning Point Ministry. Nelly, you, know, you got me over here? You want to record? Yeah, absolutely. Right. Right. Switch, switch, switch yeah. off. There we go. So, Deacon G, on behalf of Life Turning Point Ministries, we want to present you with this plaque that says Life Turning Point Living Legend Award. Presented to Deacon Sabra C. Jeter in appreciation of your many years of service in the community. Uh, Pastor Eric Williams, February 2021. Thank you, sir. We honor the God in you. We honor your service. We honor who you are and who you are to become. Okay, and I thank you. God bless you. And God bless, like I said, your minister and your church and all. And if I can be any help to you, don't hesitate to call. You are we are, sir. Oh, you are right here for you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can you get a, a closer a picture? In this video, uh, if you're new to the channel, like, subscribe, click on post notifications, and comment down below what you think about this video. Again, it's hard in my day for Black History Month. Uh, it's another one in the books, another one in the books. But until next time, peace. Sorry.